I'm going to show you how to become even more efficient in Windows 11 using Linux directly embedded. Even if you've heard of WSL, watch this video and I bet you you become even more efficient using it. I absolutely love WSL. Uh, it's one of the things that makes Windows 11 awesome. There's a lot of things that make it not so awesome, but this is definitely on the plus side of the spectrum for me as far as Windows 11 is concerned. So if you're not familiar with WSL, it's Windows subset for Linux, and it gives you access to all kinds of different Linux distributions right within your Windows operating system. I'll link a card here to show you how to get it up and going and a general overview and explanation of what WSL is. But this video today, we're gonna to focus on a few ways to make yourself more efficient when it comes to working with WSL in your Windows environment. Okay, so I would say one of the main benefits of having WSL installed is the convenience factor. I don't have to jump to another machine. I don't have to transfer files uh, from my machine to a Linux machine. I don't have to have a dual boot configuration. Do I still do all that? Yeah, because sometimes I want a full-blown Linux operating system. But for a lot of things, a lot of different tasks that I need to accomplish that often require Linux, this is more than enough. So one thing you definitely need to know how to do is quickly interact between the file systems, uh, launch applications from Linux within Windows, launch applications from Windows within Linux, transfer files. That's probably the biggest one, access the file systems seamlessly. So I'm gonna show you a few different ways to do that today. The first one is just get into File Explorer in Windows, type in backslash backslash WSL dollar sign. This is gonna take you to the root of your WSL environment. So I have on this particular machine, I have two instances of Linux, two operating systems, Kali Linux, and I also have Ubuntu. So here's Kali, you'll see we have the home and my username, and I really haven't done much here. I've just installed this, but we can easily get to the operating systems using this method of the UNC path within File Explorer. We can also take it a step further. We can create shortcuts on the desktop. If we do a new shortcut, we can just do backslash backslash WSL C dollar and call this WSL. Now we have a little penguin here that'll take us straight to that file system, the root of the WSL environment. Maybe you also want to create specific shortcuts to the Kali Linux and or the Ubuntu distributions. We can also do that same way backslash distro name. So Kali Linux, we'll just call this one Kali. All right, so now you have instant access to the Kali directory and you can drill into any part of that file system and either modify files within there, drop files in there, copy files out of there, so on and so forth, just like it's a, a local directory on your Windows computer. Okay, we'll just go ahead for good measure, create the last one, which is the Ubuntu distribution. Didn't want to do a folder, sorry about that. We need to create a shortcut. So new shortcut. Do the same thing and we'll do Ubuntu. We'll call this Ubuntu. Ubuntu, Ubuntu. How do you guys pronounce it? All right. So now that we have our different shortcuts, let's take it. A, let's take a look at another way to interact between the different environments. And by that, I mean within uh, Windows and Linux. So if we open a terminal, I love Windows 11 terminal, by the way. Um, I know I get a lot of shit because I go back and forth saying it's terrible. Windows 11 is great. I think both. I think both are true. I think there's a lot of things that are awesome about Windows 11, and I think there's a lot of crappy things about Windows 11. But if we work as a community, I think we can teach each other how to make Windows 11 great. Okay. So the terminal by default is going to open PowerShell. And just kind of a sneak peek here. This is one of the things that I love about the terminal now. I can just drop down this arrow and select PowerShell, Command Prompt, Azure Cloud Shell, Ubuntu, Ubuntu. <laughs> or Kali Linux, any of the different uh, operating systems or distributions that I have would be listed here. Okay, so from the PowerShell terminal, we have a few commands at our disposal here that can get us directly into the Linux environment. So the first one I'm gonna show you is WSL, which is a native command now, and we do dash D to specify the distribution name. If we don't do this, it'll take us into the default distribution, which for a lot of us is probably going to be Ubuntu because that is the default install when you do WSL initially. So specify your distribution, do a space dash dash CD, and then we'll just take it to the root here and do the uh, little tilde. All right, so we see that we are now in there and we're in the default home username directory. So from here, we can do a few things, uh, but what I want to show you, <clears throat> excuse me, what I want to show you is the fact that by default, when you're interacting with these Linux distributions in WSL, 
it automatically mounts the Windows file systems. I should say the Windows volumes. So let's take a look at that. Let's go CD slash mount and do an LS. So I have two drives on this PC. I have a C and a D drive. So if we go a step further, we can do CD mount C and then we can do users and then my username. Uh, which computer am I on here? Hold on. There we go. And from there we could go, let's say to the documents folder. We can do an LS. Now I can see everything within my documents folder. And if I wanted to, I could create a new document directly from here and it would land in the windows documents folder. So let's just go ahead and do an example of that. We'll do a touch. This is how you make a new file. One way to make a new file from Linux. You do a touch test from linux.txt. Do another LS. And now we see that that file is in there. We can also modify that file directly from here, even though it's not on the Linux system, it resides on the Windows side. We can still modify it directly from here. Again, showing you that versatility and the uh, convenience factor of having WSL as opposed to two separate environments. Okay, so if I do a nano and I can just do test from text, and then I can just write some stuff here. I am modifying your Windows file from Linux. Regards. We'll write that out with control O, hit enter to confirm that name, control X to exit. And now we can do a cat to look at the contents of that file. And there we are, a nice little love letter from Tux. All right. So one other cool thing that we can do here is we can create what they call a symbolic link. So we can do an LN S and then we'll link the mount C users Damien documents. And then we will go ahead and make that a link called Windows Documents. There you go. So now if we do sorry, I think we have to do this. There we go. So now we have an easy way and you can call that anything you want and you can really put it anywhere you want as well. But that is a symbolic link that gets us directly to that documents folder within Windows. And obviously you could do that for any directory. So maybe you frequent the downloads directory, you're going back and forth. You want to create a symbolic link to that. You could do that and you know make it a shorter name. Hopefully this is syncing in and showing you guys the power and versatility of the WSL environment. Okay, I'll show you another little cool feature here. We can actually launch Windows applications directly from the Linux environment. So I can go ahead and do a, uh, let's see here, what do I want to do? I want to do a example where I'll launch Notepad. So I'll do mount C Windows system32 and we'll run the notepad.exe file. There we go, it's on my other screen, but that's all right, let me drag it over. Okay, so now I will do I launched this from Linux, modifying it from Windows, and we will save it into Linux. Regards, Billy Boy Gates. All right, so we'll control S to save that. Oh, I didn't actually want to do control S there, but that's all right, it took us to the right screen. Save as is what we need to do. So we'll, excuse me, we'll save it to the WSL dollar sign. Uh, I think we're in Cali, right? Cali, sorry. And we can just do it from here, home, Damien. And then we will call this from Windows with love, that text. Alrighty, so we save that. We can use Alt F4 to close that out. And now let's see where we're at here. I think we did change directories. Yeah. So we're going to CD back to that home, Damien. And now we're going to do an LS and we see the from windows with love. Oh, I put an I at the end. Oh, well, we can always modify that later if we need to. So if we do a cat from windows, there you go. And we could easily modify this from here. We could delete it. Um, yeah, again, you can do pretty much anything you need to do from either side and move things back and forth and stuff like that. So we could also uh, copy files. So let's do one more example where we'll show you how to copy a file. 
Let's clear this. Let's do a ls of the mount c users Damien downloads this time. No such file or directory. Okay, we did something wrong there. CD mount C users Damien. CD downloads. Ah, I fat fingered downloads. I'm sure you guys caught that. All right, anyways, now we're actually in the downloads directory. We didn't need to do that, but I went ahead and did it anyway because I wanted to see what I did wrong there. Okay, nothing like a live demo, right? Okay, so let's ls here. We got a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, let's just copy one of these. Um, don't want to do anything too large. How about this PNG file? All right, so I'll do CP to copy that, and then I will paste that in there. And I want to copy that to home, Damien. So I'm copying this from the Windows side, right? Because we're in that Windows volume that's mounted. And then we're copying it to home slash Damien. So now if we go CD home slash Damien LS, there it is, webcam circle dot PNG. All right. So I think that's all the tips I wanted to show you guys here today. I will note one other thing. You can easily launch Linux GUI applications. So something like GIMP is a good example. You could launch that directly from Windows. So once you have that set up, you could just type in GIMP. I don't have it going here, but you could easily type in GIMP after you install it. Um, this wants you to go download it, but this would launch if you have it installed correctly directly in Windows, but it would be running from the WSL environment. So even though it's running in WSL, um, we can do things outside of the terminal that are still in WSL from a GUI standpoint. And again, check out that card I linked. I'll put it in the description as well. I show you how to do that in the initial WSL video. So that's going to wrap it up here, guys. I wanted to show you how to hopefully become more efficient when you're interacting between Linux and Windows environments using WSL. Do me a favor. If you get any value out of this, hit the thumbs up button. Consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a lot, and I appreciate it. And let me know in the comments below, are you using WSL? If so, what's your go-to commands? What's your go-to use case? Hopefully you guys all love WSL because I think this is a great step forward for Windows. Hope you all have a great day. Until the next video, take care.